we talked about on Sunday, praise God, out of First Timothy. I want you to go there. We're going to get in this word and delve into it really, really quickly on today. Um, Paul talking to his son, Timothy, a disciple, a young man in the faith. Um, anybody wants to know anything about discipling, uh, Apostle Paul was a, was a great uh, discipler and, and he discipled a lot of people, but Timothy was especially discipled by Paul. First and second Timothy, Paul was writing to his understudy and he was encouraging him. Praise God. He told him in one chapter, he told Timothy, he said, Timothy, you are my son establishing a relationship. He said, I want you to be strong in the faith, which established resources from heaven. If we're going to do anything for God, if we're going to be used by God, we need to rely on the grace of God. The grace of God is God giving us what we don't deserve. So if there's anything that we get for God to our ministry that he gives us come from grace and everything that we need to sustain the ministry comes from grace. Amen. Because we don't deserve any of it. But I'm thankful that Paul told Timothy, he said, Timothy, my son, what I want you to do, I want you to be strong in grace. And I'm telling you, everybody, your prayer in the morning should, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, I'm asking for your grace on today to complete what you have given me and charged me to do. Amen. But then when the resources come, he told Timothy and he suggested that you have a responsibility. He said, you need to teach faithful men who will in turn teach other faithful men. So we need to have a relationship with God, number one. Praise God. We need to rely on the resources of heaven. Praise God, which is grace. Be strong in grace. And he said, I want you to teach faithful men who will in turn teach other faithful men. That's discipling one-on-one -on -one right there. Praise God. Relying on God's grace and then teaching others. But here in 1 Timothy chapter 6, we hear Paul talking to Timothy about something that I want to spend some time on, uh, about fleeing and following and fighting. And I think it's, it's necessary that we look at the text and we understand contextually Paul was dealing with, it was the third time he had mentioned something about false teaching up in verse 3. When we look at verse 3, we see that any man teach otherwise and can sit not with the wholesome words, even the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the doctrine which according to God, which is according to godliness. Uh, Paul, powerful preacher, always stayed in the word of God and always used the word of God when he ministered. He is a proud. He said he is proud. If a man is out here teaching, right, and he's not going by the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul told Timothy, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. How many know that there's a real gospel and there's a fake gospel? Paul suggested if any man come preaching a gospel that was different than what he was preaching was, was the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, you know what? Let him be a curse. Absolutely. Excommunicate him from the church. We're living in a time and a season right now that we need accuracy. We need accuracy and prophetic word, and the prophetic word is the word of God. God's been speaking, praise God, all the time in his word. If we want to know what's going on, look at the Olive Discourse. Look at Matthew 24, 25, and 26 if you want to know what's going on in the world right now. God is telling us, but the problem is we don't want to look at that because that doesn't really speak to what we want to do in life right now. The Olive Discourse speaks to what's getting all ready to happen in life. He says, there's going to be many come to me saying that I'm, 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 I'm the Christ. He said, don't be deceived. He mentioned it over and over and over again. We're living in a season where we can't rely on man's philosophies, man's opinions, people who seems to be a superstar, so to speak. They had that problem in Corinthians. Paul said, listen, you guys are, are, are praising spiritual superstars. One say, I love him. One say, I love Ronnie. One say, I love Jackson. One say, I love Jenkins. One say, I love him. Paul said, listen, I'm glad I didn't baptize any of you. It's really about God. It's really about Jesus Christ, right? So as, as, as we look at Paul and, and he's talking to him. He said, if, if anybody is coming preaching to you and he's not preaching the words of Jesus Christ, he says, this is what they do. He said, this type of person, first of all, this type of person that preaches like this, he is a proud individual. He is proud. He's proud. Somebody say proud. The Bible says pride comes before destruction. He, he is proud in verse 4. 
That's these teachers. So God is telling us how to identify in people that we need to flee. God said, identify this year. Remember, we're fleeing some things, but we're going to learn who to flee from and who not. We're not going to question, um, is this one? No, the Bible tells us specifically who to flee from. There's no question. Praise God. There's no gray areas in the Bible. There's nothing negotiable in the Bible. God says it's and that settles it, right? His word is settled in heaven already. Everything God says is going to come to pass. So this man is proud. He, he, he's a proud man. Um, that's the attitude of a false teacher. But guess what? This proud man, what does he know? He says they don't know nothing. <laughs> Their knowledge. Do you know if we're not in the word every day? Do you know if we're not studying to show ourselves approved a workmen that need not be ashamed to rightly divide the word of truth? Do you know that we can hear something that has scripture attached to it, but not be contextually sound? So automatically it's an error and you keep preaching it and you keep praying it and you're praying it and you're fastening. But because it has not been revealed to you through the spirit of God, which is the teacher that lives inside of you, that you have no need, no man teach you anything. But you relying on the person and who said it. Praise God. Then that word is void. It's void. It's the Bible. It's the word of God. But we use it out of context. And you're saying, how come this stuff isn't working for me? I'm praying, I'm going to church, Bible study, coming out in the cold, and it's not working. Because the way that it was taught and by whom it was taught by. Praise God. God said, watch out for it. Because he said, these people really, he said, they don't know nothing. But doubting about questioning and strifes of words, whereon cometh envy, strife, railing, evil, submission, perverse disputing of men, of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. Watch this. Supposing that gain is godliness. How many believe sometimes that, that we even we went overboard when it comes to this prosperity message? And, and, and we're thinking that if you don't have anything, you're not godly. The Bible says, blessed that are poor in spirit. Those that are desperately dependent on God for everything, for they should see the kingdom of God. That's powerful to me. Blessed are those that are desperately dependent on God for every area of their life. We're going to see some things, y'all. Coming up soon, I can proclaim it. I can prophesy it to you. We're not going to be able to uh, rely on the things that we've been relying on. We're not. Why? The scripture says it's going to be times like there never was before. Amen. The currency is already seemingly going out. You, you, there's no currency anymore. There's certain stores that say you, they don't even want you to use money. They want you to use cards. We had it somewhere, y'all. It's called Antichrist. But Paul says that these people, they don't really know nothing. Uh, they, they're concerned. They want to argue. They're, they're, they're useless. Praise God. He, he says the, end, the results of their teaching is envy and strife. Man, how could two people get together and want to talk about the things of the Lord? But by the end of the conversation, there's envy and strife. You got two people sitting there. They really don't know nothing, according to Paul. Amen. This is what Paul was telling Timothy. They really don't know nothing. And so at the end of the conversation, you got strife and you got envy. Uh, and then he says, the real problem is they got corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. That's the real problem. That's the real problem that we have in the earth. The Bible needs to be preached in its entirety from cover to cover. Amen. And when it's preached from cover to cover, when it's preached with conviction, amen, you, you, you can't preach only by way of convictions do we leave impressions. That's why Paul was so impressionable because Paul was so convicted about what he was teaching. See, Paul had lived a life of a sinner turned saint because he ran into Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. So he was able to go and to explain his conversion experience from, from being a sinner, the persecuted saints, a mass murderer, to meeting God on the road of Damascus, Jesus Christ, falling off of his horse, being taken and blinded three days, taken him down to Ananias' house, having hands laid on him and, and scales like scales falling off his eyes so that he now can begin to see. Now he's walking in the spirit of the truth and the living God. Paul understood what a conversion, spirit, uh, conversion experience was all about. So he was able to explain his faith, y'all. So he said these type of people, he said, Timothy, I want you to look out for. Mark, I want you to look out for these type of people, right? 
But they suppose that godliness is a means of great gain. I said it earlier. I say sometimes we think that if we don't have the houses and the cars and we're not competing with the world on the material gain place. Jesus said it in other texts in Matthew. He says, he says, why are you looking for, for cars and uh, um, for, for what you might eat and what you may drink and what you may put on? He said the people of the world seek for that. He said the people of the world worrying about, he says in Timothy, we need to be content with having something to put on and having something to, having something to eat. We talked about contentment. Then he goes on to say godliness and contentment, being satisfied with God and God alone is great gain. Man, you winning right now. The world talk about winning. They say winning has to be attached to some material gain. All I do is win, win, win. Well, guess what? Even when it looks like we losing, we winning. If we're content with where we at in Christ. I understand and I'm learning from a 10 day experience with God or 11 days in quarantine. I'm learning something about God. I'm learning that God is sovereign. God is in control of all the dealings and the inner workings that are going on, but he's trying to get us and he's going to get us to fulfill his purposes, not ours. That's what the sovereignty of God is. He's in control of everything, but he's moving it towards his perfected plan for everything. Amen. So Paul began to talk about this guy and I didn't cover that on Sunday. He began to talk about false teaching. But he tells us in verse 5, he says, supposing that gain is godliness. First Timothy chapter 6. He says, from such, turn away. He says, from such, withdraw yourself. Flee. He's really talking about fleeing even right there. Verse 6, he says, but godliness and contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we will carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be there for, with content. We need to be content with clothes and with food. We're going to find out how content we are. God is going to challenge us in some areas, everybody in the faith, to find out if we're truly content. Paul talked about it. He said, I learned to be content. Contentment is a learned behavior. Yeah, you, you got to learn to be content because there's some stuff you think you're content with and you don't know until you realize that you're not content until the test comes. Amen. You think you're content with enough this. You think you're content with enough of that until you see somebody who you think is not on your level with more. Then you realize you ain't content no more. <laughs> you realize, man, this dude, how did Ronnie get that? I thought you was content. You should be happy with Ronnie because the Bible says when, when one celebrate, we celebrate with him. When one sorrows and goes through something, we go through with him. I thought we were the body, correct? But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it's certain that we'll carry nothing out. And having food and rain, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation, a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw on men in destruction and perdition. Praise God. So this is this is a really serious thing, y'all. Um, it's, it's, it's dangerous, right? It's dangerous for us to fall in love with money. He says in verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. You know anybody that's walked away from the faith chasing money? Mm, have you ever erred? Have you ever kind of walked away, not from the faith totally, but have you ever chased money before? I didn't chase money before. On this side of the cross. Amen. Praise God. Worked my butt off, working all day at the railroad, then go to the gym, work all those hours, sprinkle a little Jesus on it by talking to a couple kids in the gym, and I figure I fulfilled my godly kingdom obligation for the day. But God says, what about, what about canceling some of those clients? What about finding a day that you don't even have to go to the gym and just spend it with me? Amen. No, no, money, money, money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. And God is not talking about, watch this, he's not talking about uh, you having money. He's talking about money having you. The desires for material gain and to begin to compete with the world and be on the same level in how our house looks and how our, what we drive and what we put on. That's the thing that Paul is talking about. Amen. Amen. Help us, Lord. They have erred from the faith 
and peers. Paul was telling his son Timothy, I didn't seen it happen before. I've observed some of my friends get caught up into money and man is erred from the faith and peers themselves through with many sorrows. So in verse 11, he says, but thou, O man, now I'm talking to you, Peter, I mean, Timothy, I'm right back at you, but you, Timothy, O man of God. And when he says that, he's not only talking to Timothy, but he's talking to all of us because the Bible says there's no scripture given by private interpretation, but all scripture is given for correction, for doctrine, that the man of God may be perfect for every work of God. So that lets you know that this word is all inclusive. The Bible, it doesn't just highlight and zero people out. When we're talking about obeying the word of God and reading the study to show ourselves approved, he's talking about all of us and it's inconclusive. So he says, oh man of God. So he said, oh Mark, praise God, oh Jackie. Oh, 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 Carlos. He's saying, flee these things and follow after righteousness. He said, we need to follow after righteousness and we need to follow after godliness. We need to follow after faith. We need to follow after love. We need to follow after patience. We need to follow after meekness. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. What is the opposite? of greed. The opposite of greed is contentment. <laughs> the opposite of, of greed is contentment. I'm telling you, I'm not suggesting, I'm telling you that anybody that think that material gain gathering is godliness have been tricked. You've been fooled. Amen. God, yes, he wants us to have things, but he don't want things to have us. He said we need to flee money. He said, we need to flee the love of money. God is suggesting that we, we, we really run away from the desire of becoming rich. I bet you, boy, I know that lottery man is up there. Amen. Boy, it's about hundreds of millions. Amen. For, for the lottery to come up. And, and, and people say, just, just if I hit this thing, I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to give them this much money. I'm going to bless everybody here. I'm going to give me an RV, and I'm going to get it, and I'm going to drive it, and I'm going to be all right for the rest of my life, dude. Can I get an amen? <laughs> amen. Praise God. Amen. Good, 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 good prayer. Praise God. You didn't leave church out. You said, I'm going to make sure I take care of the church house, right? But he says, he says, flee these things, y'all. And Paul was emphatic about telling his son, he said, flee, flee these things. So he, he was telling him that he need to, to flee these things. So what he's condemning here, y'all, is harmful desires. Not the possession of things, but harmful desires, right? The warning is not simply to love the love that love of money can be harmful, but that this craving has led some people to defy the faith and show themselves to be unbelievers. Man, that money boy, they say jokes do some strange things for some change, right? Y'all heard it before? Amen. We People do strange things for change. Amen. That love has made anybody, a lot of people show who they really are. You know, when people die, man, ain't there something that's fighting and feuding? Amen. Over somebody else's stuff. Christians. Boy, no, I was supposed to get this. I was supposed to get that. We don't leave that alone. But He's talking about fleeing, really, sin. Somebody say fleeing sin. But when we look at this thing, fleeing sin is, is paired with chasing down something. Amen. That's the way that we get away from something. The Bible says, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's look at verse um, 14. Verse 15. Talking about... Abraham and Sarah, and truly if they had been mindful of the country from whence they came out of, talking about Abraham and Sarah, they might have an opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country. Man, so you got to leave something, Mark, and you got you, you, you to gotta desire something better. Now, something better is God, because every good and perfect gift comes, from the, comes down from the Father above. So how to determine what's good, we got to go to the word of God to find out what's good. Not what your cousin or what your sister or what your auntie said is good. We got to find out if God 
if God in his word sanctioned it as good. Now watch this. He said, and truly, if they had been mindful of the country of what they came of, if they still had their mind on sin, right, they might have had the opportunity to return. Good, strong possibility. When Paul says this, I'm forgetting those things that's in the past, what that word forget mean? The word forget means to assign to oblivious. What does assign to oblivious mean? Assign to oblivious means to forget to forget. <laughs> As flat out, forget to forget. That's what a sign to oblivious me. I didn't forget, I forgot. But I can't keep talking about I'm done with strawberry pie. I'm done with strawberries. I ain't eating frozen or I ain't eating none from the produce section. I'm done with strawberries. Man, I'm telling you, you better get out of here talking about strawberry. No, you better start talking about peach cobbler. You better start talking about I'm eating me some peaches. I, I like, I'm getting me a peach pie. I'm getting ready to go. There's no way you can stop. Thinking about strawberry, steady letting the word strawberry come out of your mouth. Change the word. I ain't chasing money. I'm chasing Jesus. And not be ashamed of it either. I, I'm not chasing fame. I'm chasing the purpose of God for my life. I'm not talking about being ashamed of it and whispering and saying, no, I'm going to church. I, I'm serving the Lord now. I ain't like Whoopi Goldberg on Color Purple. No, no, you, 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 you're not, you, you're not doing that. You, 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 you're not ashamed. <laughs> this dude right here, so he know the joke. But, but, we talking about not being, not, not being mindful of the place that we came out of. They might have had the opportunity to return, but now they desire a better country. That is in heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared for them a city. God got some stuff prepared for us, but he wants us to begin to get in the starting blocks and don't stay in the starting block. Let's take off. Let's take off going towards it, leaving the things that entrap us and challenge our very faith and begin to chase virtue. Virtue, we're chasing what's right. We're chasing Jesus Christ. The Bible says, be ye imitators of God. Amen. What are we following? You know what we need to be following? We need to be following the fruits of the spirit. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what the spirit told me that we need to begin to follow the fruits of the spirit. Let's go to, let's go to Galatians chapter five, verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Amen. So, so, so the fruits of the spirit, I say that again, is love. Somebody say, I'm following love. Somebody say, I'm following joy. Somebody say, I'm following peace. Somebody say, I'm following long suffering. Somebody say, I'm following gentleness. Somebody say, I'm following goodness. Somebody say, I'm following faith. Somebody say, I'm following meekness. Somebody say, I'm following temperance. Against this stuff, I can't go to jail. <laughs> Against this thing, there ain't no law. You can't put me in jail for being gentle. You can't put me in jail for loving you. Man, God understood the law because he made the law. But he said, if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the desires of the flesh. You're able to walk in the spirit, transcend the law, not break the law, but still be able to transcend and be able to walk, man, in the favor of God. Powerful, y'all. Powerful. He said, the stuff I told you to do, you can't get in no trouble for it. Stuff I told you not to do, you can get in trouble for it. But even when you get in trouble for doing what I told you don't do, if you confess your sins, you're faithful and just to forgive, and I'll clean you from all unrighteousness. I'll put you back in line again because a just man falls seven times, but he rises right back up again, and he gets back in line again. I'm talking to somebody who's been walking in regret and condemnation. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. For those that walk in the Flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but those that walk in the spirit do mind the things of the spirit. Mind the things. That means they got their mind on the things of the spirit and not their mind on the things of the flesh. Amen. Y'all with me? We're still talking about fleeing some things and we're still talking about following some things. So we, we, we talked about um, on the rich young ruler. Y'all remember we talked about the rich young ruler? Amen. Find this. 
Amen. Slow down a little bit. Cause I want to get to um. Man, was um, you remember the rich young ruler? Rich young ruler. He was challenged. He was challenged of, of what he was what he was really following. He he was. He, he was challenged. Got it right here. Let me find the text. Uh, let's look at Luke chapter 18. Hit this real quick and then we're gonna hit on Joseph. About 20 minutes, and, and we're gonna talk about somebody that, that fled something. Yeah, we, we're gonna talk about escaping seduction of the, the enemy. Amen. Fleeing something, but chasing something at the same time. Luke chapter 18, verse 21. And I have kept all these things from my youth. I want to go up a little further than that. Hold on. Thank you, Father. Luke. Chapter 18. Verse. Let me see which verse I want to go to. Let's go to verse 20, maybe. Um, look at verse 18, look at verse 18, Luke chapter 18, a ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit, inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. No one is good except God alone. Watch this. You know, the commandments do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not honor the father and the mother. I have kept all these from my youth. He said. When Jesus heard this, he told him, you still lack one thing. Ain't that something? That man, sometimes we think we got it all together. Jesus know your one thing. He, he, he got your one thing down pat. He, he know what it is. And he ain't the only one that know who it is. Say, so know what our one thing is, too. He know what our one thing is, it, it is keeping us from the perfected will of God for our life. You know why? Because he studies you. You know why he goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And just like a lion, look for somebody to, 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 to slip. You look for an impala, a kangaroo to slip, and then he gets him. He waits on us to slip in the walking carnality. Carnality to the devil is just like slipping for a lion in the jungle. Amen. It's just like an animal forgetting that that lion is over there. When we walk in bitterness, when we walk in unforgiveness, when we walk in sin, all of those are open doors and open windows for Satan to attack. When we walk in disobedience. Amen. Amen. So he said, I've kept all these for my youth. He said, when Jesus heard these things, he said, you still lack one thing. Sell all you have and distribute it to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come, then come follow me. He, he said, then you, you could come follow me after you've done this. After he heard this. So Jesus challenged him. He said, go take all that stuff and give it away. You didn't keep all these commandments. But you got something troubling you. Your material gain has went to your head. And that's what you think makes you who you are. You think if you sell it all, if obviously if he walked away sad, he thought that's who made him who he was. Amen. You're keeping all this law. You're talking about a religious person, right? He heard these things. He became extremely sad, but he was very rich. He, he, was, he was very rich. Amen. Keep walking this thing out. So we need to walk in the spirit. We need to follow what's right. So we need to flee um, the love of money material gain we need to leave what's wrong and we need to begin to follow what's right what's right the fruits of the spirit we just talked about it. praise god the fruits of the spirit is love and joy and peace and long suffering gentleness and goodness and godliness or goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law so let's look at genesis chapter 39 i think joseph is a good person that exemplifies both fleeing and following. I think Joseph was fleeing seduction from a woman. 
Didn't have the scriptures like we got. Joseph didn't have the scriptures. Joseph was done terribly wrong by some folk. God chose to follow God even though his brothers did him wrong. Even though he, he went through a lot of stuff, and we're going we gonna to study this, this Joseph piece, praise God. But I just want to look at the seduction of Joseph right now. Let's go um, to Genesis chapter 37 first. Let's look there first. Genesis chapter 37. Um, I'm going to cut across the field because I can fill in the blanks of, uh, of, of, of anything that you, you might have missed if you hadn't, hadn't read it. Let's, let's go to verse uh, 36. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and the captain of the guards. So they, they, they took Joseph, they sold him to the Ishmaelites, and the Ishmaelites sold him to the Midianites. And the Midianite sold him uh, uh, um, to, to, to Egypt under Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guards. So this, this Potiphar was in second command to Pharaoh, but he was over the prison. He was like a warden of the prison. Watch this. But I want you, I'm going to cut across the field. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump up to uh, Genesis chapter 45. Go to Genesis chapter 45. I'm going to tell you, though, Genesis chapter 45, I want to look at verse 4, 45 and 4. And watch, Joseph said unto his brethren, come near to me, I pray you. And they came near and said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Remember, they sold him to Egypt. But now, why did they sell him in Egypt? Why did they get mad at him? They got mad at him because they was jealous. He told a dream that he got from God that he was going to raise above everybody, including his parents. He's going to be all over his siblings, and he was going to and he was going to rise above. Them. God gave him this dream. He gave him a vision. Amen. Amen. And he told it, and they got jealous to the point where they didn't want to kill him, but they wanted to make it look as if he was dead. So, so, so they 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 got this blood and they got his coat. And they put the blood on the coat and they took it back to their daddy, amen, Jacob. And they told him, <laughs> our brother gone. Uh, I, think, I think a lion ate him up. Jacob, man, even type people try to support him and get around him and support him and, and give him so he, he, he just mourned. He said, I'm going to mourn for the rest of my life. Joseph ain't dead, though. So a lot of times, man, you don't understand that when we walk in the favor, like, Joseph walked in because Joseph was willing to flee, right, wrong, and follow right, which was God. No Bible, no Holy Spirit, no none of that. We find a man named Joseph, and I ain't found nothing in the scripture that, that would suggest that he operated outside the will of God. No spirit, we got the spirit. No word, we got the word. No prophecy, we got prophecy. Come on, y'all. If Joseph can do it, we can do it. Somebody said, I got to flee wrong. Somebody said, I got to follow right. I got to follow right. Now, check out Joseph's life, y'all. This is powerful. Let's go to Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. Amen. I got I to gotta look at the first part of it because I'm trying to figure out, Joseph, how, you, how did you accomplish this stuff, man? How, how did you accomplish this? And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guards, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither, and the Lord was with him. I said, Lord was with him. The, the Lord was with him. If, if God is with you, you have divine approval. He, he had approval. Praise God. Even though he didn't have approval of others, he had approval of God. So if God be for you, he's more than the whole world against you. Watch this. Captain of the guards, he brought him down to the Israelite, and the Lord was with him. And he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master of the Egyptians. Man, you look at this, this Joseph this and got uh, threw in a pit, left for dead. Now he's up in Pharaoh's house. Why? Because the Lord was with him. I don't care what you do this year. Seek the presence of the Lord. Say, God, I want you with me 
wherever I go. And I've realized that for you to be with me, then there's some other stuff that can't be with me. So I'm going to flee this other stuff so that you can be in me and lead and guide me into all truth. God, I'm emptying out myself this year already, God, for you to indwell in me and for you to dwell in me and lead me by your indwelling spirit. Man, that's it, y'all. That's what we want. That's what we're fleeing. We flee in anything that can jeopardize our relationship with the true and the living God. I haven't always done that in my Christian life. And I've suffered badly because I haven't always walked in the spirit. So I could not fulfill. Uh, and, and, I, and I sometimes desire, fulfill desires of my flesh. But man, you get older. You put away childish things. Hey Amen. When you were young, you did young folk stuff. But when you get older, meaning mature in the faith, you put away childish things and you say, God, I'm tired of not only hurting myself, but I'm tired of hurting all those that are attached to my life. Joseph didn't have this issue. Joseph, for somehow, for some reason, he trusted in the true and living God through all of his circumstances of his life. Amen. How, how did he do that? Though? How, how was Joseph able, able to do this? The Lord was with him. His master saw that the Lord was with him, right? So not only was Joseph approved by God, but, but the Lord made all that he did to prosper. Let's look at Joshua chapter 1. We talk about it all the time. It's one of our favorite scriptures here. 1 and 7. Praise God. Watch this. We're talking about prospering. If God calls you to prosper, then I, I guarantee you, you're going to have some great achievements in your life. He says, only be thou strong and very courageous. Moses talking to Joshua, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written in the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it into the right hand and to the left, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever you go. Do you want to prosper wherever you go? Man, it's a possibility for you to be rich in an impoverished society. It's a possibility for you to be healed when everybody else is sick. It's a possibility. Praise God. Man, this is powerful, man. He says, do according to all that is written in the law. Right? Because my thought, I said Moses, this was God. Watch this. Now the death of Moses in chapter, in verse 1 of that. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord came to me, came to pass, the Lord spake. So God told him this. I want to retract, praise God. I said, Moses, I got before myself. Before myself. Moses had died already. Moses was talking to him. We really got a problem. <laughs> but, 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 but God says in verse 6, be strong and be of good courage. For unto this people thou shalt uh, divide an inheritance, the land which I swear unto the fathers for them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, thy servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left hand, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever you go. God said, if you do what he tell you to do, you're going to prosper wherever you go. Then verse 8, he said, this book of the law, we're talking about Joshua, but we're talking about, we're talking about Joseph too, because these instructions now, not only for, for Joshua, but these instructions obviously weighed heavy on Joseph as well. Praise God. Watch this. Watch this. And this is after Joshua. Or Joseph, this book of the law should not depart out of your mouth. Somebody say confession. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. If I always want to have something to say that God says, then I always got to meditate on what God is saying. If I'm always meditating on what God is saying, I always have what God has to say to say. Amen. Meditate on the day and night that thou mayest observe according to do all is written therein. Then somebody say obedience. So I got to confess it. Then I got to meditate and get some more of it. And then I want to walk it out. So the Bible said, when I'm faithful over the little bit that I got, he make me ruler over many. We want another revelation. We want a divine. Boy, that was deep. Why we want something so deep when God said, love your neighbor as yourself? You, you, I want this deep revelation. A deep revelation. A deep revelation is, is that Jesus is Lord. So live like Jesus is Lord. What does that mean? Everything he tells you to do, do it. Amen. Amen. Book of the law. And have good success. Amen. He said, you, you, you're going to have good success. So we're talking about 
prosperous. He say right this, then thou shalt make that way prosperous. Let's go to Psalms chapter one, verse three, real quick. Psalm, verse one, I mean, chapter one, verse three. Psalms chapter one, verse three. And he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So we're talking about the fact that uh, Joseph, he had approval from the Lord. He was a prosperous man. Why? The Lord made all that he did in his hands to prosper amen and then verse four let's keep going genesis chapter 39 verse four the bible says that and joseph found grace in the sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had he put into his hands so Joseph found grace in the sight of his boss, even in the house of the prison guard. Let's look at Proverbs 16. Amen. Proverbs 16, not a word. 16 and 7. Proverbs 16 and 7. When a person ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Come on, we're walking this thing out, y'all. This is Joseph's life, but we're looking at all these scriptures that back up the life that Joseph was living without having the Bible. We got the Bible. You want to know how you can be prosperous? You want to know how you can find favor? You want to know how everything your hand touched turned to gold? Make your ways please the Lord, and he'll even make your enemies to be at peace with you. Amen? Amen. Somebody say complete acceptance. Man, we want acceptance from folk that ain't going to never accept us. I want acceptance from those who can help propel me into the perfect will of God for my life. That's who you want. These people, because he did what he was supposed to do to God, these people that was even the enemies, praise God, were able now to set him in a position where he will be able to do what God showed him in the dream years before. Man, God in control. Man, if we don't get the sovereignty out of the story of Joseph, if we don't get sovereignty out of your life and my life, how in the world can God take a wretch like you and I and got us sitting in church on a Tuesday night? Studying the word of God, not only paying attention, but paying attention with intention. Because God, I want this to be the best year of my spiritual journey. That's why you're here. Amen. But we're looking at Joseph. He found favor. Uh, uh, he was accepted. Praise God. He was a prosperous man. Keep reading. He made him overseer over his house and all that he had put his hands to. And it came to pass from time to time that he had made him overseer of his house and over all that he had. And the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The Lord blessed his whole house because Joseph's sake. Somebody say abundance. Man, you're talking about living the abundant life. If you're the only one getting blessed, you're in the flesh. Everybody around him was getting blessed because he was obedient to God. The whole house. Man, you want to, man, you want to be the man. I want to be that dude. I want to be that. I want to be, you want to be that dude for real. Be his dude. Be God's dude. Amen. Be his and do what he tells you to do. So in an employer, right? So he's working for his employer. He's actually, thank you, Holy Ghost, telling us how we need to act around even our ungodly employers or boss or our godly bosses. He said, you go in there and be on your best behavior. You be punctual. You do whatever he tells you to do. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it to the glory of God. He's telling us how to act, y'all, in the midst of godly and ungodly bosses. Praise God. If I do that, then God's going to take care of them. If I take care of them, I don't have, my voice don't speak as much volume as God when he breaks somebody down when they're asleep at night and say, leave that man alone. See, see, the heart of the king is in God's hand. And as the waters go back and forth, God can turn 
the king's heart. Amen. Amen. So he made him overseer over everything that he had in, in his house. And all that he had, he put into his hands. Let's, let's, let's look at, at, at chapter 41, verse 39. Yeah, I'm reading this, praise God. Chapter 41. Genesis, verse 39. Chapter 41, verse 39. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You will be over my house. This, this is Pharaoh now. And, and all my people will obey your command. Only I as king will be greater than you. Man, you tell me somebody came up. Joe always tell me I'm going to come up. You ain't going to come up unless you go up his way. Because anybody that go up any other way is a robber and a thief. We ain't talking about going up this year. Somebody said, we talking about going way up. This year, we're going way up. Way up. We're going way up. Why? Because we're going to do what God tells us to do. We're going to realize that the Lord is going to be with you just like he was with Joseph. He's not a respected person. He was a prosperous man. Joseph found grace in the sight of God. He made him overseer over his house. And all that he had, he put into his hands. Praise God. And the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because uh, 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 was upon him and all that he had in the house and in the field. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Because we're saying, boy, I like this, and it's good for Joseph. But you need to understand something, too. God then blessed you with some stuff. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath. Whenever you see T-H, it's past tense. That applies presently. Past tense that applies presently. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where are you seated at? I'm seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. So I'm sitting where all the blessings is, all the favor is, and God's saying the way I can be blessed is blessed as a man or woman who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor steadeth in the way of the sinner, or sit in the seat of the scornful. And his delight is in the book, in the law of the Lord. And in it, he meditated in it day and night. Come on, y'all. He's telling us, man. Telling us Joseph only had a heart for God. Joseph had to have a heart for God to receive all this stuff that God did for him. Back in 39, let's keep going. Amen. Amen. Not only that. Verse 6. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not all what he had, save the bread which he did eat. He wasn't even paying no attention to his surroundings. He wasn't even caught up into that. All he was doing is serving the Lord. But he, he, he just said, I want to make me a sandwich. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And NIV it says, now Joseph was a well built and a handsome man. Joseph was handsome in, in form and appearance. That's in the new King, King James. So here we go, a man with all this influence, right? He had all this influence. He was humble. Could you imagine how this dude appeared to people? He was humble by, you can see, by his actions. Because the Bible says he, he resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. So obviously, because he found favor in the sight of the Lord, he had to be walking in humility. Because God was favoring his life. He was handsome, then he would cut up like diamonds. Hit the GM every day. Doing push-ups or something, probably lifting rocks. I don't know what he was doing back then. But he was built, y'all, and he was nice looking. When that happens, see, you look nicer than you think you look when you're walking in God. Because it's something about a person of God who have surrendered their life unto the Lord. There's a glow. There's something that's different. They're not saying the same thing as everybody's saying. They ain't trusting in the systems. They're not trusting in the left wing or the right wing. They're trusting in the true and the living God. That person, man, word come out of his mouth because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So they didn't fill their heart up with the word of God and God's plan for salvation in humanity, in life. Man, God with him. He walking it out, y'all. So he was, he was, he was, he was attractive, man. Amen. But but something happened. Verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that 
his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. She, he, he just flat out, she ain't pulling no punches, man. Amen. She said, I'm, go, I'm going in. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going right in. I'm, I'm going to talk about what I want. Praise God. I'm not going to back down from it. She said, I, I want you to, to come. I want you to come live with me. Amen. Somebody say strong temptation. <laughs> strong, strong temptation. Let me find this other version. Amen. Wow. Verse 7. After some time, his master's wife looked longingly at Joseph, and she said, she said, sleep with me. We know back then, okay, for him to do something as such would be put to death. I thank God for his grace and his mercy. See, because the God doesn't want us fixated on things of the world. For he says, all that is in the world is lust of eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. And these things pass away. He must have knew this scripture in his New Testament writing. He must have knew that for me to touch her and for me to be with her, this is just, this, this is outdated stuff. This ain't going to work in God's eyesight. It can't gain me nothing. It's going to pass away. This temporal. Man, Joseph had the mindset to say, I'm willing to suffer with the people of God rather to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Somebody said we're being tested. We, we being we 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 being tested. Uh, Matthew five and twenty eight. Jesus says, you, you know, to be with a woman is, is, is adultery. But he said, for you to to think, look at a woman and desire her, undress her with your eyes, you've already committed adultery in your mind. Yeah, already. Yeah. So so it was a test going on. Uh, uh, it, it, it 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 was it was a test that went on, and I'm I'm gonna try to go through this. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, behold, my master would not what is with me in his house. He left everything with me in the house and he has committed all that he has in my hand. That's what he said. He says, but he refused and he said to his master's wife with me here, my master does not concern himself with anything in his house and he has put all things he owns under my authority. No one in this house is greater than I am. And he withheld nothing from me except you. You're the only thing that is off limits in the house. Obviously, the way my brothers did me, the way I got put in the pit, the way I got sold into slavery, the way I end up where I'm at right here, obviously the hand of God is on my life. People, you need to understand something. Have, being dead broke and having nothing with God is better than you having nothing without him. Having everything without him. Having you have nothing and look like the lowest on the totem pole, but with God, no money, no fame, no attention, no likes, praise God, no followers, praise God, no friends, but you got God. You better than anybody with all that. You better than anybody with all that. So he's realizing that favor is upon his life. There's none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Wait a minute, man. Wait a minute, man. He, he's saying, now this part of his wife. This is this, this, this is this, this is part of his wife, but he's saying, I can't do this to God. See, see, he's fleeing. We're gonna see how he flee. But he's fleeing because he's following. See, you can't follow until you made your mind up that I'm going to flee all forms of temptation. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. False teaching. Inaccuracy. False prophecies. I'm not following that stuff. I'm, not, I'm, I'm fleeing that because I'm following what's right and what's black and white. Yeah. Simple is cool. Somebody say simple is cool. Simple as cool. There's nothing greater than this house. He said, I ain't going to sin against God. He, he, he said, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to sin against God. She, she spoke to Joseph, though. Watch this. And it came to pass that she spake to Joseph day by day, right, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. So he was, he was, she, was she was hollering at him every day. Psst, hey, hey, 
talking to him day by day. Come, 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 come lie with me. Amen. He, she spake to him day by day that he hearkened not unto her, but he hearkened not unto her to lie with her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. I'm going to work. Somebody said, I'm going to work. And I'm going to work righteously. Everything I do at work, I'm going to do it righteously. I ain't looking at the boss's wife. I ain't looking at the money. I ain't looking for a chance to get exhausted or get exalted or be promoted no time soon. I'm going and I'm going to be content in whatever I'm supposed to do when I get to work. That's all Joseph was doing. I ain't messing with nobody. He said, I'm going to work and I'm doing my job. Right? And there was none of the men in the house. The devil, he likes to work in secret, Mark. He, he loves to do his dirt, man, in secret. He don't want nobody around. You remember the story of uh, Absalom and Tamar? And the Bible said he loved his sister who he shouldn't have loved in the first place. See, the devil likes to clear the room because he knows you ain't convinced. And if you by yourself and you don't have any persuasion, you're going to go this way because he's been watching you. So he had a friend named Jodadab. Jodadab said, check this out. You the king's son. How in the world is you in here sick and tripping about this woman not coming up here? You tell them to get your sister up here and come make some cakes in front of you. David's son, Absalom, he calls over there, right? And he gets his sister Tamar to come into the room. She come in the room. You know what he said? Everybody out. Everybody. He got that kind of pull. He's the king's son. Everybody get out. Talking about how the devil works in secret. See, see, be careful about being alone. Somebody said, you know what? I like spending time with myself. I'm an introvert. Yeah, you're a wicked introvert. Got a lot of stuff going on. Amen. But, 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 but he's saying, he, he, he's saying, get out of the room. Everybody get out of the room. He said, come here. Make these cakes in front of me. That's the sister now. This is in the Bible. Better than all, all my children. Ain't it? One like to live way better than that. He said, come here. Make them cakes in front of me. And she came over and close to him and said, I'm going to make these cakes for you. And as soon as she got close enough to him, he grabbed his sister, raped her, had sex with his own sister. Then he said, you know what? He thought about what he had did. And he said, get out of here. After sin have became, after sin is conceived, then death come in. Now I realize what I done did. She said, you kicking me out of this room is worse then what you do raping me? Come on, somebody. Satan working private, man. He said, get out of the room. Get, get out of the room. And watch this. Watch this. And it came to pass about that time Joseph went in the house to work, and there was none in the house. And she called him by his garment, saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand. See, he fled. That means take flight. I told you what fled me. That means break camp. That mean I got to get out of here. Praise God. I guess the light's telling us we got to get out of here. Joseph went into the house and, and she caught him by his garment. She was aggressive. Satan is aggressive. He got a hold of some of us. And he got a hold of us. He got his garment saying, lie with me. And, and he left his garment in her hand and he fled. And got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had her garment in his hand. And was fled forth. She called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he is wrought. Watch this, and I'm ending on this. He has brought in a Hebrew unto us. Watch this. She lusting, Satan trying to kill you. But now the men back in the room, he says, He didn't brought a Hebrew up in this house to mock us. He came unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that, he lifted up his voice and cried, and that he left his garment with me and fled. Rejection is something else, ain't it? And got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these things and these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass as I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and he fled out. Man, is it, is it possible that some people can be falsely accused 
and even in prison for things that they didn't even do. When it came to pass, when the master heard these words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, and his wrath was kindled. We're going to leave it right there. We're going to leave it right there. What did he do, though? He fled. He fled. He was subliminally, without even mentioning it, because it don't say. He said, I ain't going to do this sin to God, so that let you know where he stood. I'm not going to do this in sin against God. That needs, to be, uh, that needs to be our resolve this year. We need to be pursuing God. Godliness, temperance, patience. Extract the things that God taught us tonight about how to behave at work and how to work man. The Bible says work with your hands. Study to be quiet and mind your own business and work with your hands. That's what the Bible tells us to do. Amen. We, we're going to keep looking at this story of, of Joseph because we're going to realize through this that if we can uh, follow some of the lessons that Joseph teach about fleeing and following and fighting, and he ain't never throw a blow. He ain't never throw a blow. How about that? How about fighting and never throwing a blow? How about how about winning an argument without opening your mouth? You can do it, man. When you flee, follow and fight. Father, we come in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, for the life of Joseph. We thank you for Timothy, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for Timothy. We thank you that Timothy was able to carry out, praise God, uh, uh, instructions from, 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 from his elder and his, his teacher, Apostle Paul. God, we thank you, Lord God, that we're learning from our, our teacher, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us, that there are some things in life, Lord God, that we just have to walk away from and we have to flee. But as we flee, we're vigorously running towards you and your will for our life. And in the midst of it, we have to fight the good fight of faith. But we have to understand, even though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God, as the pulling down of strongholds, indicating that most of our fights are in our mind, casting down vain imaginations and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, bringing every thought to the obedience of Jesus himself. Help us, Father God, be more like, like Jesus, more like Joseph, more like Joshua, more like those people, Lord God, that went before us and blazed the trail of righteousness and obeying God. God, we thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise, everybody. Amen. Amen. I thank you. Praise God for coming, man. I just thank you for, for being here and supporting this ministry. I'm telling you, man, Temple Worship Center, we, we are going to stand strong in this time, and we are going to see God's presence, man be illuminated in this place we're going to see god healing virtue in this church we're going to see his deliverance in this church i believe it therefore i speak it because if only two of us come and gather in his name he promised to be in the midst if two or three of us come in here and touch and agree on anything that we were asked and we're not going to ask for stuff for us we're going to ask for stuff around us understand this joseph had to consider the people that was around him because if he would have made one false move, you are a representative of the kingdom of God. You make a false move and allow somebody else to stumble. You're, you're, you're worse off. Amen. You're worse off. That's why Satan likes to do his work in silence. And he likes to get everybody out the room. But when it started getting like that, I said, no, I want to get some godly people around me. What is all these people? Why am I in the room with all these people that don't believe in my God? Amen. Or anybody alone that don't believe in my God. Bible says, what does, does, does a believer have to do with the infidel? What does dark have to do with light? Let's separate this year, y'all. Come from amongst us. Be ye separated and touch not the unclean thing. Amen.